So I've been uh, working away doing the uh, angles to make sure that they're perpendicular or parallel with the uh, spar line. I've uh, worked these so that there's a nice uh, taper that matches so there's no great gaps on any of them. They're all reasonably good and uh, doing the compound uh, angles here where it's angled that way and back because that rib sits at an angle against the spar the same as that one does against the spar so they both sit at, at, at uh, angles uh, the lower edge of the uh, the rudder slopes up from the spar and the top again slopes up so it's a little bit like that I suppose is about the best description we've got yeah sort of like that on the top of the rudder um, so that's as far as I've got I'm now ready to uh, start prepping up and uh, doing the gluing uh, we've still got a fair chunk of, uh, of wood left over I've got uh, some bits from the end of the uh, the, the uh, spar section a little bit left over from cutting uh, things and uh, two full lengths uh, still available to me so uh, obviously they uh, they provide a little bit of extra so should people make a mistake on their first go at doing this they've, they've got some uh, some spare so the next section from here is as I said prepping up for gluing I'm ready to start uh, putting things together. I've roughed up the uh, side of the wood very slightly with the uh, 180 grit going across the grain and I've rubbed down the sides of the, uh, the, the plywood uh, slightly as well. Now the resin it's a 10 to 4 mix or 5 to 2 so we'll see how that goes. I've got a syringe here so I can actually pump it in, I don't know how much I actually will need, could have done with a bigger syringe but I'm quite happy using a small one at the moment. So I'm just going to go up to uh, 10 grams because I've got a fair bit I want to actually glue. I've got everything sort of prepped up to do the spa and everything. As you'll see, I've uh, put tape on uh, the edge of the workbench where I'm going to clamp, and I've got a uh, strip there which I'm going to use for actually clamping the ribs to. So that's uh, 10 grams, so I want 4 grams of hardener. And that syringe is minuscule. That's what I had. Use what we've got for the minute. Oh, nearly there. So that bit sorted out. I'll put that into there. Cap on. Always required. Now 
move the pots out of the way and get a mixing stick. Right, get my scales out. So, mix this for a couple of minutes. I'm just putting on one edge of each rib and one edge of the spark so I want to make sure that they're actually perfectly flat. Um, well if I just put clamps on I, I, I could build in a bow at the moment so I'm just going to make sure they're absolutely dead flat. Okay I prefer to use a brush when I'm applying uh, resin to things so find it more controllable than the uh, stick method a lot of people use especially with this resin which is uh, quite quite a runny resin um, they've supplied it seems to be uh, extremely runny so I'm going to put enough on there so that it actually does wet the surface and we've got some for, ooze, uh, for squeeze out but I will in my usual way I don't like an awful lot of squeeze out uh, it doesn't add any strength it just adds weight um, so I want to see squeeze out because that tells me there's enough glue in the joint but then I like to get rid of the excess uh, squeeze out as soon as I can uh, really so There's the first piece Make sure it's orientated the correct way Make sure it's going to the right spot on the line First clamp in. Second clamp in. I'm just making sure that it's true to the edge. going to go along with my little stick thing here just to remove that excess resin it's squeezed out and then a little bit of tissue. Let's rub, rub along like that. And we'll take off the excess from the outside. to the next one so a bit of time lapse just showing you what uh, what I was doing on the remaining three wooden ribs within the rudder system each time being very careful to make sure that the square section is right up against the uh, edge of the plywood 
and uh, removing the excess squeeze out as you shall see described earlier. The whole rudder's build could have been speeded up I suppose if I had just clipped uh, the strips to both sides and uh, done it that way but I wanted to make sure that they were dead flat and uh, the plywood being so thin it would be quite easy to build a warp in if there was any flex or bend in there. That's effectively added a day to the build. So 2.2 hours to this point. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Like Christmas. These little uh, clamps are uh, fairly good, considering that they're cheap as chips. That definitely looks uh, really quite good though. A bit of a sand down the edge, not too much uh, run around. So that one's good. This rib, I've been looking at the plans and things, and I want to have a once I get the side skins, uh, one, one of the side skins um, measured and drawn up uh, on the side skin, so I can actually lay bits on there to have a have a look. It, it, shows that the tip here goes against uh, a strip that goes on the trailing edge of the uh, skin and that this one uh, should sort of nest into it sort of a bit like that uh, uh, I'm not sure whether I like having that gap there uh, so I may well deviate from the plan very slightly and uh, cut a piece of this uh, this strip uh, or a couple of pieces with it with a taper to match so that it's got uh, some contact area between the two because that's the very bottom of the rudder which is not hugely exposed but uh, you know I'd, I'd like the skin to be uh, well supported at that lower corner uh, and this lower court, this this lower rib to be uh, well supported, just in case it should get a slight knock, because that corner is the most likely area of the rudder to get a knock. So uh, <coughs> we'll have a look at that uh, in a future session, no doubt, when I get uh, get closer to uh, to dealing with it. It won't take too much to put some extra bits in. So yeah. So far, they all look very good. I'm happy. Just turn those around so they're ready. For, so I've got them in the right orientation for gluing. Let's have a look at uh, the big beastie here. Oh, very slight stick. Oh yeah, got, got a little bit of the resin that's just run underneath there at each end, just a very small amount. That that can be uh, cured with sanding. We'll do that after I've put uh, the other side on. Uh, it's not a great deal of resin there anyway. So this time round uh, I'm going to use 5 grams of resin because I, I mixed up uh, 10 grams last time I think that's just a little bit too much I'm going to do 5 grams but I also this time I'm going to be using uh, some of the cotton uh, flux section that we've got here if I can get into this uh, into the wee bag and uh, see if we uh, can just use a little bit of that just to thicken it up uh, where I've got the, uh, the joints going together uh, between the uh, the ribs there, so that the, the stringers on the ribs and that goes on, uh, just because of 
you know, there might be a, a really small gap hidden away which I can't see as I'm offering it up just to, just to make sure that the, the, the uh, resin doesn't run away from those. So I'll use a little bit just on the ends there but everywhere else it'll be as I did last time with uh, just the, uh, the thin resin, well the thin resin without any addition. I'm just uh, getting my pieces so I can put those into the correct places. So on with gluing the other side. Pretty much the same as it was before, except with that addition of the uh, thickened uh, resin going into that sort of compound joint of the, the taper where it meets up at the training edge. Only three ribs have that, so you need a small amount. I hope uh, you're enjoying this. I'm planning to put these videos out about twice a week uh, so that uh, yeah, you can sort of follow through because uh, there's a fair few videos going to be created for this. And of course, the disclaimer, this is not the instructional video. Do use the instructions that come with it. Just because I do it doesn't mean it's right. All these bits are now going to dry. The temperature currently in my workshop is 21 degrees, 21.5, and the humidity is 44%. Uh, so nice and dry, and uh, reasonable temperature. Anything over 18 is good. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.